sja.ca to learn more. At St. John Ambulance, we do more than save lives, we change lives. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. This is Out of the Fog. And if you're tuning in for the first time, this is a local matter show that goes across the province where we bring all the movers and shakers from all the different industries, from entrepreneurialism, artists of every kind, uh, people who work in community. And the goal is to expose all the exciting things that they're doing with you guys watching at home. So maybe you will get up off that couch and do something sexy yourself. And where would I be without the one and only DJ Slim Macho to my left? Speaking How are you? sexy, I know. I know, right? Yeah, it's a Look good at you. Segue. I can't stop. I know, yeah. It's uh, it's Took season. Slim, last week, um, a great show, our first back for 2020. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, always a good time to talk about the RPM challenge. And Indeed. Yep. I so. know, it's so cool, actually, because uh, I will say that the RPM challenge um, has brought so many award winning. Newfoundland musicians to the world. Yeah. Um, Brianna Goss being one. Right. Um, and she's won so many awards and is doing so many great things. And she started by doing a simple little RPM album during the dead of winter. I know, yeah. I'm, I'm making myself sort of do it this year. Like I'm mm -hmm. allowing myself to let go of any uh, self judgment and just do something. And who knows where it'll lead. Well, like Elling said when he was on the show last week, is about creative courage. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I guess the bottom line is that it leads to a piece of music that I made for my for myself. That's how I should think about it, really. And Indeed. I will. I will think about it that way. Well, I'm going to harass you every week until it's done. Do it. Do it. I need it. I need to be harassed. <laughs> um, you're in luck. Yes. This week on the show, we have the amazing Jennifer Trask, who is just celebrating 10 years in her exciting and successful journey, a big award from the Toronto Star, mm -hmm. and we're gonna learn all about that. And then of course, Neil King's coming through, him and Trudy talking about the amazing work they are doing in terms of film, and we're gonna talk about the nickel, and of course, Peter Barber, who has an exciting new company that helps make healthcare way more accessible here and around the world mm -hmm. out of the Genesis Center, which is another Another great entrepreneurial hub space for technology that we love. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break. You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's. Add some whoa, to your life. Let's go. CTV Sci-Fi Channel Free Preview is on. I'm bringing the party to you. The hell are you doing out here, Picard? Saving the galaxy. Fancy a trip in the box? The crisis has begun. I am attempting to save the multiverse. Explore our universe. Engage. CTV Sci-Fi Channel Free Preview on now. Rogers TV, St. John's. Thank you so much for coming on back. This is Out of the Fog, a local matter show, and I love when I get to have good friends on the show, uh, and you are one of them. Yay. Everybody, it's Jennifer Trask. How you doing? <laughs> good, Donnie. So, let's hop in the old hot tub time machine and oh. go back 10 years. <laughs> um, we had met, and you wanted to be a coach who helped coaches and other entrepreneurs achieve their dreams. And I said, this girl just might do it. And 10 years in, mm -hmm. you are now around the world, meeting people all over, helping them to unlock their own potential. And it's just so rewarding, because uh, I've been in business myself 10 years. Yeah. So you and I were both getting started in our ventures at the same time. Yes. Tell everyone at home about what it is that you love to do. I think the thing I love the most is just helping people realize like who they actually are. Totally. And when they're, you can really see their confidence shine through and they give themselves permission to just be like, yeah, I am really awesome. <laughs> like, <laughs> because yeah. like, I guess we're, we're taught growing up that, you know, to celebrate who we are and all that we're worth, sometimes we put that power in the hands of other people. Yes. Yeah. An external 
mm. validation and external circumstances, and um, that gets dangerous. It does get dangerous. Yeah. What led you into this vocation? Well, I had always been, it's funny, I looked back, I, uh, my mom is here with me today, she may or may not remember, but um, I, when I was a kid, I played a lot of volleyball, mm -hmm. and I had posters in my room, and I used to make like motivational posters, like hand write them, even as a teenager. And then when I went into university, I went into business, and um, I, one of my four part-time jobs during university was an aerobics instructor. <laughs> and I really loved helping people and helping people be healthy. And I was like, oh, I get to get paid to get exercise and help people feel good about themselves. Um, and so I think it was kind of always there. And I grew up in an entrepreneurial household mm -hmm. and, um, you know, with parents who were supportive. And my dad was uh, in business as well. And he was kind of in that a mentorship role. So I think it was like, in my bones, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and so, you take on your first client. Go back there. Oh, that was a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. But that was in social media. I wasn't doing yes, mindset work then. Yes, exactly. I started But you know, it's all media. like, same church, different pews, isn't it? A little bit, and I got into mindset because people would pay me to, you know, tell them what to do to right. grow their business, and yeah. they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, Hmm, <laughs> something going on. Yeah, here. why aren't they doing the thing that they're paying me to tell them to do? Right, right. And or why? or a portion of it. Sure. Right? But not the full extent. And so when did you realize that mindset was um the culprit? When I just started asking questions. Hmm. And I was like, okay, so how come you didn't get that Facebook post on or this or that? When if you start digging enough. Yeah. And I had already been sort of in the self-help coaching world for my own personal benefit. Right. Um, and so I had an understanding of it. And then as I went more into asking people about themselves and then getting to the root of the problem, um, it worked. And so I was like, maybe I should learn more about this. Hmm. So I did. Now, you jumping into the idea of mindset and all of the work that you've since done, you're very much ahead of your curve. Because now, like, we're starting to understand more in entrepreneurialism and being open to being coachable coaches and all of these things, yeah. um, that mindset ultimately is what it's all about. But you knew that years before it became um, a popular thought. Well, it's interesting because when I first started, I found uh, Tony Robbins, mm. uh, who many people know today now Indeed. is one of the biggest names in my industry. Sure. Um, and I remember he said success in anything is 80% psychology and 20% mechanics. And I was like, I was new out of MBA school and I was like, whatever, if you know how to market and brand yourself, you don't need mindset, like what is this talk, right? Mm. And here I am, I mean, that was probably 12 years ago. So right. now I'm thinking maybe it's more like 90% mindset and mm. 10% mechanics. Yeah. What's your advice out there to anyone who have not met who is trying to move ahead in whatever way whether they have their own um, entity or working for someone, um, and they are getting in their own way. There's a couple things. So um, one is you have to be open to being helped. A lot, a lot of people don't like the idea or they think that it doesn't look good on them if they need help. Right. But it's weak or something. Yeah, like it's weak or something. But when you look at the world's highest performers in any industry, uh, business, in athletes, all the, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Um, they have teams of people who That's help true. them. Teams. So, true. so I'll always say to entrepreneurs, if you want to kick ass at your business and do amazing, like you need to think about, about yourself as like going to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So if you want a gold medal, how do you get there? And you do not get there alone, and you do not get there by thinking you know everything, so and you true. do not get there with a closed mind. Mm. You have to always be learning. Toronto Star. Yeah. Talk about that. Well, I had a, a client slash friend of mine um, nominate me. The Toronto Star did these awards of the best of in Toronto. Um, and then it uh, was voted on by the people, and then I won. Like, can we have a round of applause for this? That's incredible. <laughs> but Toronto's like the big smoke. That's like where you really feel your Canadian superpower is if you're brave <laughs> enough to be there. And for you yeah. to win that award, what does that mean to you? 
Well, it's interesting because, you know, um, as an entrepreneur, you don't tend to get accolades for anything, Fair. really. Um, and I can think of many different milestones. Like, you know, when you graduate from university and people might throw you a party or something. Yeah. But in all honesty, I feel like what I've accomplished as an entrepreneur, I feel like I'm just touching the surface. Mm. I mean, I got decades ahead of me. But I'm just, that was the hardest thing I've ever done is to get to here. Wow. Like ever. So to have an award with that kind of recognition mm. is, is, is kind of nice. It is nice. You deserve it. Thank you. For our final moment, what's next? I I just next is is I want the world. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Whatever. I just I want to help millions of entrepreneurs, and so I have a lot of work to do to do that. Mm. And I just I just I think they are the game changers of the planet. So if I can help them, we're good to go. How can we get a hold of you to help us unlock everything within us? Yeah, my website, so Jennifer with a hyphen right. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all okay. the places. All the places you need to be. Yeah. I'll tell you what, guys, if you are looking to unlock your potential and move ahead and get that mindset where it needs to be, Jennifer Trask is the one for you. Remember that name. Big things are coming. She's all <laughs> over the world, but she started here. Don't forget. Yes. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. You said it's played again. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. When my legs get stronger, I want to play basketball, volleyball. I want to run. I was sick when I was a little baby. I had meningitis. Even after they did the amputations, they said that it was likely he would not make it. To know, you throw him on that bike and off he goes. My bike helps me get my legs stronger. Without the war amps, being able to afford his limbs and devices would be difficult. Thank you for helping me get around. <laughs> oh my God. Welcome back everybody. It is Out of the Fog. We're a Local Matters Bop, and we love what we do. And now we're on to interview number two. See how this rhymed that way? It just it comes to me. It's crazy. How's so it going? I'm doing great. So good to see you, Neil. And Trudy, how are you? Hi. So, guys, movies, you know? The film industry. What's it all about, you know? It's like, let's go there. For me, personally, it's about going out there and just doing it. Uh, That's pretty much how I got into it. Like, I worked in all different sectors before, like yeah. banking and military. And I decided that uh, I want to start doing what I want to do, you know? Mm. So we can go out and, and uh, create something from nothing. Imagine. Yeah. It's artistry. It is. And that's what a lot of us do as creators. It's about just taking an idea and making it real, whether it's a poster, music, as we had earlier, and film. And a lot of the times I feel like it's out of pure boredom. <laughs> you, know, you just want to get out there and do it. Yeah, it's so true. So what brought you into the industry? Um, I started working with, uh, actually, I got into Frontier uh, mm. as a background worker. And then I started doing all the shows like Little Dog and uh, uh, Hudson and Rex uh, most recently. Um, and as a kid, I always had like a video camera in my hand. So my dad's, my dad's a chunky video camera with the VHS that goes in it. You so, had that? Oh, yeah, totally. What's that, so money, make, like, uh, what's that? It was like money back in the day. Oh, no, not even. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget looking at people who had like home movies of their childhood. I'm like, they must have been rich. Yeah. You know, I was like, I could have really got pictures. You know what I mean? Love you, Mom. You're the best. So talk more about projects that came from your immersion into the film industry. So uh, recently we, we uh, signed up for the uh, Four Points film project, myself and Trudy, and a whole mm. bunch of uh, a bunch of people who got together, uh, a bunch of people from the community. We said we want volunteers, and it was overwhelming the amount of people that we that we were working with. 
Now, before we go any further, oh. yes. explain to everybody watching um, the four points. Like, what is that? Like, tell you you want to go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So the Four Points Film Project is a worldwide uh, project. Anybody, anywhere in the world can make a film. You have 77 hours to make this film. Uh, they email you a prop, a line of dialogue, and a, a character that has to be in the film. And you have 77 hours to write the script, get your crew together, your cast together, and make a film that's uh, seven minutes or less in length and submit it. That's a short. That's a short. But a lot goes into making a short film. It does, it really yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. So what got you into it? Um, I uh, did theater um, in, as a volunteer wherever I could find a place. And um, I saw an ad on social media that said, can you make a film in 48 hours? And I said, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> so I put together a team and um, in Halifax, and uh, the team won best in Halifax no and best special effects. So uh, we ended up competing at Film of Palooza, which was part of the prize. That's awesome. And so when it comes to the production that you have been working on most recently, why don't you tell us about that? Uh, recently, I started doing the uh, Nickel Animation Challenge. So we got 30 days to do a uh, animation film. And I believe Trudy's doing one herself. Yes, I am. Um, maybe I can come over and we can collab on that <laughs> a little bit as well. <laughs> um, guys, when you come up with the idea, before you're able to get a crew of believers around you and go after all the things that you need to in order to make it happen, it can be quite overwhelming and lonely. Am I right? 100%. Yeah. You know, it can be a very lonely world, especially if you can't, if you don't, if you don't take the time to reach out, mm. you, like, like, uh, you, you're, you're going to miss all of those shots that you don't take. Yeah. Whoa, that's deep. Yeah, that's cliche. That, that, that's good. <laughs> I'm going to write that down somewhere. I'm going to put it on a mug, I think. Or maybe an internet meme. Uh, our thing was uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, wow. That's how You're we got really all serving people. it up hot now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for all of these avages, these sage pieces of advice. So how close are you to completing the project that you're into now? Uh, the animation challenge? Mm -hmm. um, that's a thing, right? You never actually know. It could be, I, I feel like it's pretty much done, but I'm going to look at it over the next month and be like, no. I have people coming in with, like, uh, Jake Delaney is going to come in and help me from uh, Catching Amistad Productions. Mm -hmm. He's going to do some, some uh, film work with me because it's really hard to, to film yourself. Fair enough. So I'm taking care of all the animation stuff and the storyline, and he's going to help me do that. Let's <laughs> talk about the nickel and how instrumental that organization has been in helping you guys have a stage for you to... Um, show the amazing works that you're doing. Talk about the Nickel Independent Film Festival in your own experience. Uh, personally, I, I, I love it. The first time I did it was the summer for the Comedy Challenge because mm. I consider myself to be somewhat of a comedian. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't really pay the bills, but it, it, it works out sometimes. Feeds you know? the soul. It, yeah, it feeds the soul. It, it, does, it does yourself good. It does. And what about you? Um, do you think that you will be airing the work that you are doing in any film festival or showing types of opportunities upcoming? Absolutely. I put just about um, everything I create into the various film festivals. Um, and I will put it out on social media, uh, get feedback from the communities to say, oh, hey, you know, um, you filmed at Lundrakin's Barber Shop. We'd be available to... To, if you want to film here, you know, and, and I want to hear stories. I want to hear from people and, and um, just, you know, give me the stories or give me ideas, mm -hmm. you know, anything that is especially um, Newfoundland and Labrador mm -hmm. oriented, right. you know, so that we can get it out to the world. I think it's amazing. I'll tell you what, guys, in our closed moment here, I think it's so amazing that we are lucky enough to have artists of every kind who come together, whether it's film, photo, or otherwise, to help tell stories about us and our own journeys and to share those with other people, I can't think of anything more rewarding. So thank you so, so much for the work that you do and the countless hours it takes to make a film come together. If people want to get involved, where can they get at you online to uh, get involved in what you're doing? How can they get at you? Uh, you can contact me uh, at my Instagram mm -hmm. account. Uh, it's right here on the bottom of the screen, probably. Am doing this right? <laughs> it'll, moment. it'll show up now in the next second for sure. It's uh, uh, they can email me at phoenixproductions at yahoo.com or they can find me at um, on Instagram mm -hmm. or on Facebook. Can't wait to see what you guys do next. 
Big round of applause for our film lovers. This is Out of the Fog, guys. We'll be right back after this break. of the fog and we're in our last hang for the evening and I love to keep it switching back and forth. So far tonight we're talking about coaches and entrepreneurialism, then we double down into film and that whole journey. And now we're back with my boy Peter, what's up? What's going, man? Good to see you again. Good, yeah. So guys, I want you all to be meeting this guy because he's gonna tell us all about a fantastic entrepreneurial pursuit based on all sorts of things that we are all loving, wellness and health and guidance, which is the name incidentally and derivative of his new business, and we're gonna learn all about it right now. Why don't you tell everybody watching at home about what it is you're bringing to the table, boy? Yeah, so uh, the company name is Sino. Uh, so we're a virtual healthcare platform. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is we work with companies, and um, our mandate is the accessibility of healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, so accessibility can be defined different ways. So some people define it solely by geography, which here in Newfoundland, that, that's, a, that's a big issue. Sure. Um, but it's also defined by time. So um, for example, if you have to wait two weeks to go see a healthcare provider, or if you have to wait six months, eight months to see a healthcare provider in some cases, um, is that truly accessibility? And, and we would argue no. Right. So our mandate for starting with corporations is to help employees have better accessibility. That's wild. Yeah. And I guess you're right because, you know, we're lucky um, where we are in the middle of the, you know, St. John's area, but uh, the rest of the province might not have the access that we think that we do. Yeah, I mean, th the reality is uh, it's not just a Newfoundland problem. Uh, we've talked to companies in uh, in Manitoba and BC, uh, Northern Ontario. Um, there's the accessibility issue is pretty widespread, um, and so without the idea of virtual and being able to connect these providers, regardless of where they are, um, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, talk to me about what led you into this idea and, and your evolution in the industry of fitness, which you've been in for quite a long time, right? So why do you lead us back to what your first foray into wellness as an industry was, and then we'll go forward. So I'm a kinesiologist by education, so I've been in the health and wellness sector for a while. That's right. Um, this all really actually started uh, with, uh, my wife is from Triton, okay. uh, which is a beautiful town there in central western mm -hmm. uh, side of Newfoundland, mm -hmm. and uh, we were there, we were talking to her grandmother, and her grandmother needed some physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the sad reality was, um, the nearest physiotherapist was an hour and a half drive away in both directions. Wow. Um, you know, she needs to have appointments two, three times a week, and, and that's just not a reality, particularly in the wintertime. Um, and that really got my mind thinking um, about accessibility and about wh why have we not solved this yet. Every business I've been involved with to date has always been brick and mortar and actually offering services, which is great. Right. Um, but, but when you start thinking about accessibility, then it changes. And, and I've ran into other cases then where you know people needed to get, see a healthcare provider on the weekends, be it a doctor or be it a mental wellness counselor. Uh, we talked to many people up in Labrador um, and the accessibility of these types of providers, nutritionalists, th whoever it might be. Um, healthcare providers right now, accessibility is limited. Um, so we figured we gotta solve this and we can bring everybody on one platform, a secure platform to connect people with live stream video, uh, secure messaging, document sharing, then we can actually bridge that gap. So what do you do? How do you get it from idea into the site that we now have? Yeah, so end of the day, it's about support. Um, you know, I've been blessed to have some amazing uh, investors and partners along the way mm -hmm. to be able to make this happen. Right. Um, you know, uh, Chris Kluett and Justin Whittle from Proactive ha have been massive, another local company, but a, a massive supporters um, uh, of me and our journey. Um, and so, yeah, so we, we got together a, a ragtag of, of people, and we put some funding together, and, and we built it. Um, and uh, now we're gone to market and building clientele, and it's going well. I was on the site this morning, and I was very impressed. Vigilant, of course, an incredible organization uh, listed on your site, and Shopify. What are we talking about? So um, what we do is we go to companies and we figure out where their health gaps are for their employees. Right. Um, Shopify in particular, we were talking with them and they mentioned their big problem was uh, ergonomics. Mm -hmm. So they're a global company, mm -hmm. uh, over 5,000 employees spread right. over eight different countries. Right. Um, and so most of their employees actually work from home if they're not in their head, their Toronto or Ottawa offices. Right. Um, and they're really struggling to try to find providers and trying to, to drive hours to get to people's homes and ship equipment, it was a big problem. So we said, I, I think we can 
can solve that for you. So, um, so we went back and realized, you know what, we can actually offer this within 72 hours. We can do it for a quarter of the cost. We can remove all the travel uh, challenges and then ship the equipment directly to your employees. And they said, that's amazing. Uh, so we trialed it. Uh, it worked really well. The employees loved it and said, let's sign a contract. Let's go for it. Um, I want to dip into uh, tech employees, um, which is basically everyone these days because we're all <laughs> working in front of computers, are we not? And so in my company, there's um, an employee, I will not name names, Dylan, and um, <laughs> every day I walk by him and I say, what's up, tech neck? And he says, well, I, we know now because he's not, he's like this. <laughs> Ergonomics, yeah. huge. Massive. Yeah. I find it so impressive that you as a company um, out of here are able to help employees with ergonomic health related um, offerings all over the world. How does that make yeah. you feel? Uh, amazing. Uh, like I said, the mission, uh, we had a, a company uh, retreat there over the summer yeah. and we wanted to figure out what was our mission, what, what, what made us actually get up and go to work every day. Right. And, and what we came to is this all comes back to accessibility of healthcare. Uh, regardless, muscle skeletal, mental health, medical health, whatever it might be, in this mm. case is ergonomics, so that's muscle and joint health. Sure. Um, but our mandate is to help people and the people that cannot normally get accessibility, if we can bridge that gap with our platform, then we're doing our job. What's next for you? Next is just just more more growth. Uh, you know, we're building out the platform. We're constantly adding more uh, more features, more capacity, uh, more and different types of providers uh, that we're looking to, to branch out onto the platform. So uh, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Big year ahead. Yeah, 2020. No deal. I'll tell you what. There's lots of companies all over the province that could use uh, what it is that you guys are selling. How do we get at you online to learn more? Uh, really, the website is the best way. So www.sinocyno.ca. Mm, that's great. I'm really thankful that you came on the show. I'm excited about what you're doing. Five round of applause for our boy. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, guys, we are out of the fog. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Until next time, we'll see you soon. So this is. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Queer people were usually not the ones at the forefront.